This patient came to see me six months ago for endodontic treatment of tooth number 21. As you can see, large periapical relucency associated with the tooth right there. And patient has symptoms, plus there was buccal swelling associated with the tooth as well. Again, you can see that's tooth number 21 and this large periapical relucency associated with the tooth. And here's the date, as you can see, almost six months ago when she came to see us for the endodontic treatment of this tooth number 21. So we went over options with the patient. Uh, root canal with guarded prognosis. Again, I'm like a broken record. I always tell the patients, I can't promise, I can't guarantee that this infection will go away with the root canal. We may have to redo the root canal or you may have to uh, get an apico or we may have to you may have to pull it. I don't know. We'll do the root canal. We'll do our best to do the root canal. And only time will tell. If we're successful, great. If we're not successful, then we'll go to the next phase. And and um, again, we talk about all of that stuff before we start the root canal procedure. And patient said, let's go ahead and try. I want to save this tooth. This was immediately after we did the root canal for her six months ago. So we did this... We did this root canal in one appointment, again, one appointment, and take a look here. Some of you, I think when I posted this um, case, some of you said that I was short. And again, I keep telling you guys, the extent of obturation does not determine the success or failure rate of endodontic treatment or retreatment. The extent doesn't determine that, and that's based on multiple studies. Um, one being Lin's study, Dr. Lin's study. And there was, as you can see, a little sealer extrusion there as well. Again, did this root canal in one appointment. And here's the date, as you can see, six months ago. And this was just now, six months post-op of tooth number 21. Again, you can see the extent of obturation. Some of you were saying that I was short. The extent of obturation has no effect on the success or failure rate of the endodontic treatment or retreatment. Sealer extrusion doesn't cause endodontic failure. Again, we did this in one appointment, and you can see that large periapical relucency is almost completely healed. And here's the date, as you can see today. Let me put them next to each other so you can appreciate the healing that's occurred that's occurred here in only six months. And here it is, side by side, six months ago, today. Six months ago, before we did the root canal, you can see how large that periapical relucency was. And of course, as I said, there was buccal swelling as well. And here's the date. And this was... Today, six months post-op of tooth number 21, you can see that large periapical relucency is healed almost completely, and here's the date. So, one visit endodontics works. You don't need multiple visits. And remember, large periapical relucency, and there was also buccal swelling associated with the tooth. And we did still did it in one appointment. Six months ago, Today, six months post-op of tooth number 21, one visit endodontic works. Again, that's another example. I've posted hundreds of these examples, and it's backed by science and multiple, multiple articles. And of course, as you can see, sealer extrusion has no effect on the success rate or failure of the endodontics. Extent of obturation has no effect on the success rate of endodontics or failure of the endodontics. So here it is, side by side. Six months post-op of tooth number 21.